be the most long distance call I've ever made. This is Jessica Duffy. Hi, Mike Fess. Nice to meet you. to meet you too, thank you. Of course. Let's see, so I'm sure you've done this. Hey everybody. Is that good? Okay, so you're actually going to have this headset on. Okay, great. Um, what side of your ear did you do? That one? Okay, so when we're talking to the crew, every time you hit this button, you're going to hear what we call a clingar. It's going to be like a key, and then as soon as it's over, then you can start talking. Okay. Not ready yet. Okay, do I press that? You're saying? Yep, you'll press down and when then. When I speak. Okay, yep. great. Okay. Don't press it yet. Okay. You set? Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We are ready. Marshall Space Flight Center, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. And Station, and station this is Jessica Duckworth at Marshall with Vice President Mike Pence. How do you read me? Well, thank you all very much. It's uh, it's great to be here at the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, and uh, uh, it is a uh, particular privilege for me to be able to address uh, all three of you at the International Space Station. Uh, I bring uh, greetings this afternoon, Randy and Mark and Joe, from uh, President Donald Trump. I just hung up the phone from him, and uh, he wanted me to convey his uh, admiration and appreciation. Uh, for your service uh, and your courage, and it's really great to be with all of you. Thank you, sir. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Well, thanks so very much. Uh, I know each of you served in the Armed Forces. Uh, Randy and Joe were uh, in the Marine Corps, like my son, and Mark is in the Army. Now you serve as American astronauts, and uh, I want you to know the President and I and every American sees uh, each one of you as true trailblazers in a great American uh, tradition. Uh, you may not be aware, but I, the President asked me to chair uh, a restart of the National Space Council. Uh, and I want to assure each one of you that uh, the, the National Space Council will, will uh, uh, be looking, uh, uh, we're looking to build on the historic work uh, that you're building on today. Uh, and uh, I can assure you that uh, under President Donald Trump, uh, America is determined to uh, lead once again, not just in uh, low Earth orbit, but once again leading the world uh, in space exploration. And we're just uh, really honored to speak uh, to, to three courageous Americans who are such an essential part of, uh, of NASA's mission today. Um, uh, uh, let, me, uh, let me maybe throw a question at each one of you. Uh, uh, Mark and Joe, I understand you both just arrived. Uh, in uh, space about a week uh, and a half ago. Can, uh, can you describe uh, for uh, an uh, Earth dweller like me what it's like uh, in the early going? Well, especially at the beginning, it feels a little bit like someone's holding you by your feet upside down for a while. <laughs> um, it can be a little uncomfortable, but it's amazing how quickly human beings adapt. How about the, how about uh, the rest of you? Any any impressions that you can interpret uh, life in space to somebody like me that's just looked on my whole lifetime and admired people like you? Uh, well, let me just say, it's a uh, it's an awesome feeling. It's a uh, it's really an honor and a privilege to be up here, to be serving our country and doing all this great research. But I think all of us have the little kid in us, so you know to be able to float around and just. Uh, 
kind of just break free of all these uh, these ties that we have on Earth. It's quite a, a remarkable feeling, and you know, hopefully someday more and more people can come up and experience this. Uh, uh, thanks for the acrobatics uh, behind you there. I was that was actually very impressive. Um, uh, let me uh, let me maybe throw another question at you. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a look here uh, at the space launch system that that's going to carry your fellow astronauts into deep space. Can can you talk about uh, how the work you're doing now uh, affects deep space exploration? Well, Mr. Vice President, we can definitely say that. Uh, if you get to see that uh, engine firing today, that'll be a sight to behold. It, it'll be something you'll always remember. And those engines are going to power the rocket that takes, you know, the spaceships like our Orion um, up to orbit with the people inside. And you'll hear about EM-1 and EM-2, our test flights that are coming up here real soon. Um, you know, in spacecraft just like this, actually maybe a little larger than this one, but, uh, you know, an Orion spacecraft built in the U.S., you meant to go do deep exploration missions. Um, and the work that we're doing is so that we can survive when we're in that, going into deep space places. You know, how does radiation affect us up here? Well, we're up here for six months at a time, seeing how it affects us. We're uh, looking at nutrition, muscles, bones, all these types of things that are really important that degrade while we're here in zero gravity. And just this afternoon, we were working on the miniature exercise, exercise device which was meant to fit into a capsule just like Orion, um, and so we can do exercise to maintain our health. So when by the time we get to other heavenly bodies or whatever the exploration mission is, we're fit and ready to go. Well, I really appreciate that, Commander. It's a great insight. Uh, you all might be particularly proud with your background to know that today President Trump signed a presidential memorandum directing the Department of Education to devote at least $200 million a year to grant funds toward expanding access to high-quality STEM education and computer science education is, and, uh, uh, and to focus those resources on historically underserved uh, groups. Uh, I think the President is absolutely determined uh, to make sure that uh, education in America is laying a foundation uh, in, uh, in mathematics and science and all the technical background that's going to make it possible for more, uh, uh, more of our little boys and girls to uh, reach for the stars and, uh, and uh, maybe be able to live the dream that you all are dreaming today. Um, what, what, advice, uh, what advice would you have uh, to young people today? How do, how do they make it? to the International Space Station and beyond. Well, I would start off by telling them all to, uh, to dream big. It was all a dream of ours to someday be up here, and without that dream, we wouldn't be here. So, you know, that's the first step. And then I would tell them to work hard. Somebody once told me, you know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, and you probably won't be but there's no reason why you can't work harder than everybody else. So uh, work as hard as you can, but really, you know, what I think is most important is have fun with whatever you do. We love our job. Of course, we love being up here, but the jobs we had before we arrived at NASA, we all loved them. So find a field that you're very passionate about, and if you love it, you're never going to have to work a day in your life. It's just really, really good. So, um, you know, I would pass that along and let people know there's, you know, anything is possible out there. Well, thanks for that. Let me uh, let me ask you a question. In my in my role as chairman of the National Space Council, and our council will be meeting uh, for the first time in Washington D.C. Uh, in just a few short weeks. Um, I'd, I'd love to know how, how do you believe your work on the International Space Station, day in and, and day out, advances American leadership in space. We just sent home a SpaceX Dragon cargo vehicle that uh, carried science that we've been working on for a month up here. One of them was growing uh, uh, lung tissue. Lung tissue that's going to allow them to ideally figure out you know, cures for lung cancer. So we, one of our crewmates uh, dubbed it the cancer-seeking missiles. Groundbreaking research like that up here on the International Space Station, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, is what keeps American leadership in, in space. Um, the fact that there are companies 
that are building cargo vehicles coming to our space station. The fact that those same companies and new ones are building crewed vehicles that are going to come to our space station. That's how we maintain our leadership. But most of all, the place that you sit and the mission control that we talk to in Houston and all these other NASA centers, it's the work we do every day continuing to live and work in space and dealing with the challenges of not only the daily operations, but the longevity of the operations. You know, we're going into six decades of space in America. It's the daily stuff that we do and the challenges we keep putting in front of ourselves that maintain our leadership in space. Well, that, that's a great answer, Commander, and I really appreciate that. We look forward to, to continuing to build on that as we uh, uh, develop policies in a, in a broad range of areas to support American leadership in space. Uh, well, with that, uh, with that before you uh, sail away, let me just say again, thank you so much uh, for your service to the country. Uh, I know I speak on behalf of the President and every American when I say that uh, literally and figuratively we all look up to you. Uh, and we are grateful uh, for your courage and your determination and, and the contribution that you make uh, to American leadership in space. So uh, God bless you and keep you. And I, uh, I'd like to invite all three of you uh, to the White House. Uh, and uh, I got a look at where you work. I'd love to walk you around uh, where we work and have a chance to shake your hand and thank you after your long journey brings you home. So uh, thanks so much and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Thank you for joining us on the International Space Station. And thank you most of all for your support of our exploration. And I think the National Space Council is going to do great work here in the future. We look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Good evening from the International Space Station. Great. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. President, and all the participants at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communication.